Hey everybody, it's Miranda Patron back to do another painting with you. I am thinking we are going to go for a red, white, and blue type plan for tonight. And I'm going to be doing it on a canvas here. And this is just a 5x5 five five stretched canvas. It's thick. It's like a black canvas. And I've just painted it black so I have some sort of background to help the colors pop. And then as you can see here, I just measured to find my center so we can do a mandala on here. But I think I'm going to start off the center with some of the oil paints that I've been using um, to kind of create a funky dot in the middle so that we'll start off with something pretty spectacular and then work our way out. So closer to the beginning of the year, I revealed a video about the paints that I was using to create these center dots and they are made by a company in France called PBO and they take a little getting used to working with they are pretty strong smelling so you have to kind of have a well ventilated area and they are oil so they behave totally differently than the acrylics so what I'm going to do today, I think we'll start off with a red center of it and you can use you can use brushes to put it on, but it doesn't create the cells as nicely. So I try to have it drip on somehow or pour on. And this canvas is a little smaller, so I might use a dotting tool to just kind of scoop it out and create our center dot. So you're kind of at the mercy of how this paint behaves. <laughs> so depending on, I'm hoping it stays in a circle, but we will try it out and see where we go from there. So I have this nice red and I'm just going to scoop it out. I have pipettes, but I've been having a hard time cleaning them out afterwards. I need something that breaks down an oil base, which I don't have just laying around. So I don't want to use up all my pipettes because I can't get them clean. So I'm just kind of scooping it out and then shaping my dot the center into a circle like that and now this takes a while to dry so I'm gonna pause the video just so you know and wait for it to dry and you'll get to see what it looks like when it's done it starts to create really nice cells I have another canvas started over here. Let's see if I can bring it without moving it too much. You can see it does all sorts of funky stuff. Veins and this one, I did two different colors together. So I was seeing how those worked together on a little test canvas. But we will wait and see how our red dot on this one comes out. And then we will start painting our red, white, and blue Star Spangled Mandala. So you can see a little bit. It's been about half an hour. It's starting to create little cells. Okay. I think that it's not dry, definitely not, but around the edges, I think it has stopped spreading. So I'm going to attempt to start our mandala. We'll see how we go. So I'm just using white now. I have like a pearl metallic white. And we're going to do our dots for our plus sign. And if you're not sure about where to place these, you can always measure and draw guidelines at the 90 degree angles and then the 45 degree angles and that'll help you with placing your dots on the angles that you want them at for spacing. And that's kind of how we keep a symmetry for the mandala is you start at the center and as long as you keep your spacing okay, then you should keep your symmetry. As long as your dots are around the same size, then it will stay. Hi 
All right. So it has been a couple hours now. You can see the center dot did its cells pretty large. Kind of cool, just fun, something different. So I'm going to continue on with our Star Spangled Mandala here with the red, whites, and blues. And this one's a nice Tuscan red. I'm just using my brushes tonight. The angle spot detailer from Princeton. It's just a liner brush that's bent. The ferrule's bent. And this one's a size 10 0. This one here I'm probably going to use too for the bigger dots and some of the swipes. Um, it's a little well weathered. My children decide to use my pink brushes and be creative, which I do try to encourage. But this one got left in the water, which is something you don't want to do because the water will soak right up through it. And it soaked up the whole handle here and all the paint's peeling off. But it is the same angled brush. It is a little bit more blunt on the end from it being used so much um, by people that were a little rough. <laughs> so it's alright, it still works, it just makes a little bigger um, dots, which is no problem, we can handle that. So I'm going to go a little bigger now anyway. This is a nice candy apple red. And this one actually is one of the multi-surface paints, so you'll notice the difference in thickness. This one is way thicker than I anticipated, but I really like the color. Nice and bright. But you can see also it's leaving that peak in the middle because it's so thick. So could have thinned it down but I'm just gonna go for it here and then we'll just kind of drag one of the other brushes through the peak sometimes they'll dry a little bit flatter but sometimes too you can just take another brush and just kind of spread it out a little bit and then it'll dry a little bit flatter. Oh, I meant to show this brush as well. Um, I've been telling people about the e.l.f. eyeliner brush at Target because this one is bent and I just got it to test it out so I can actually talk about how it works because um, I haven't actually tried it I just had suggestions from people saying hey you know Target has one for three dollars it's made by ELF the company that uh, is one of the suppliers for Target and they actually are their own company online so you can order this from them as well but you just would have to pay the shipping um, but it is angled the bristles are kind of thick Maybe a little plasticky, I guess. Um, and the bristles are also longer. So I put some white on here just to kind of see. Well, it's not too bad, but they don't all move exactly the way you would want them to, maybe for doing dots. Maybe if you were just kind of using it here as a stylus tool, maybe it just take some practice working with but the bristles are a little less giving. Maybe it's because it's an eyeliner brush. It's used to just going in certain directions to put on eyeliner. I'm not sure. I'm not an expert. All I know is I wanted to try it out so I could let you guys know.
seems to work okay for this size dot, but I haven't gotten anything larger yet, so. Okay, I also have a Christmas red here. Okay, so now I have a winter blue Americana. And I just have a makeup liner brush here that I just grabbed. Just going all the way around each of the circles that we did in the red, just going around each of them with this winter blue. Okay, I think I'm going to work my way from light blues to dark blues. And the next one I have is a cool blue. So 
Um, I did switch brushes actually, but you could just push down a little bit harder to get a little bit larger dot as you go around. And you get the graduated dots just by letting up a little bit as you go around the circle that you're going around. And also, you know, you're losing paint off of your brush at that point, so it's going to, they're going to get progressively smaller. Somebody suggested that I do a red, white, and blue for Independence Day, and that's it's a good way to push myself outside of my color zone, because I almost never use red and blue together. I almost, I almost don't ever really use the red, which is funny, because it's one of my favorite colors. Maybe when I do the rainbow mandalas, I do, but... Now I have a sky blue, which is just the hair darker, but I'm only going to go down one side of our design here. So this is going to kind of start to create that movement effect when we do spirals. Here's our chance to fix a mistake. I was going with one of the apple barrel colors called Blue Bonnet here. And it's kind of stringy, so it, I didn't pull it up far enough and it gave a little kick and dropped a 
little line over here. So that's the good thing about having a background is we can just kind of wipe off the excess paint. And this one I might, oh, I say I might not have to repaint over in black, but there is kind of a milky, milky color there to the canvas, so just to fix it. I just have a little bit of black on my brush. And then you just blend it back into the background. So while I'm waiting for that one to dry, I'm going to continue to work around the mandala here. But I need to remember that this one's a little tackier. So you really just have to pull your brush up until that connection is broken. So you can see we're getting that spiral bulky effect here started and the more layers we do the bigger of a spiral you'll get. And this is just a 5 inch by 5 inch canvas so I'm not going to go super large with it. And now I'm back to where we made our, I made my little oops. So I'm just going to go over that on the black there and work out the rest of that. Okay, the next color I have is Coastal Blue and it's quite a bit darker. So I think it's time to start going with that contrast for the blues here. Let's do it again. You can see that one, I caught it quick enough and I didn't ha it wasn't as fluid, so I can just keep on going here and not have to go over the background because it's not too bad there.
Okay, the next is called Brilliant Blue. But you can see too how the graduated effect of the colors, I keep calling it ombre, but it looks neat when you go light to dark or dark to light and it gives it a little depth and then with the spiral you get the movement, almost like a pinwheel, it's kind of fun. start with some swipes and I'm gonna go with a cranberry color just to change it up a little bit and for the swipes with a brush you just want to get a good amount on there and you're just gonna push down at the top And drag it around. And that one I got kind of caught up. Sometimes it takes me a little bit just to get into the hang of doing it for the night, too. You just maybe even do a couple on paper beforehand. And different paints will do different things for you, so you get kind of used to learning how much you need on your brush or on your tool. And you also, how hard you're pressing will make a difference. So if I push hard, it gets fatter, see? And then you let up at the end to make the skinny tail. And you can do them fat all the way through, you can do them thin, you can change it up a bit, make it your own design. That's just, this is how I'm doing it for these ones. And this one is an apple barrel, so some of these, the paints don't go as far as you want. So I dipped it again and just kind of filling in where the tail is. And you know, you have the illusion or I didn't. You're calling it swipes, we're calling it swoops, and all these terms that sound fast, dot drag, or swoosh, and they all sound fast, but don't get rushed by that, because then you're going to be disappointed and start getting frustrated. You just really have to take your time, get a good amount on the brush, and get a good rhythm going of, get a good amount, Push down, pull it around your design. And like I said, this one, the apple barrel paints don't want to go as far sometimes. And I hear a lot of people saying that their reds don't cover as much, which I, with the apple barrel, I do have that problem sometimes. They're great, they're brilliant colors when they go on thick, but when you're pulling them out for something like this, it can be something that you just need to go over a bit again. 
a good amount. Push down hard. And work your way around the design. And it's okay if your first swipe doesn't go so well, too. You can just kind of go back over it. Let's see, this one didn't get enough paint in it. The black is showing through. Sometimes you just need to do a few touch-ups. Alright, red, white, and blue. So, that was my red... Now I need a white. And this one is just a pearl, white pearl. And that was what I started off the small dots with. So now when you're at this point, some of the debate that you want to think about is do you want everything in alignment? Or do you want them off-center, kind of like a firework, and start filling in these? Um, so it just depends on where you want to go with the design. So I am going to... What am I going to do? I think I'm going to go in alignment for the first three, and then we'll see if I can fit some off-centered ones. Well, this one's a metallic too, so sometimes those won't go as far. You gotta get more paint on the brush. And just take your time and bring it around. You can see as you do that, there's a little bit coming off, so you can just go back and fill that in a little bit. Sometimes too, if you push down too hard with the brush, or even letting up with the brush, there's all sorts of factors that come into play, but it doesn't matter if you have to go over it again, it'll just help fill in your colors. See, when I get to about here, I can kind of tell that it's not going to go the whole way. So I'm just grabbing some more paint. To help finish it all the way to the tail. So part of the thing, too, I've had people ask if these are pens that fill with paint because I just overload it so much. Because I want it to go the entire length of the drag. But it doesn't always happen, so sometimes I gotta go back and fill it in. You can even do it after it's dry, just go over it again with that color or even another color and give it a highlight. I haven't done any swipes in this metallic pearl and it's challenging here to work with, but it's super pretty.
Alright. Alright, so red, white, and then we need our blue. This one is a little bit thinner, so if your paint's too thin, they make these things called gel mediums, and you can add that to thicken your any of that here, so I am just going to make it work with what I have. But you can see with it being thinner, you get a thinner drag and the paint runs out at the end a lot more too so it's just a matter of reshaping it a little bit or getting thicker paint I'm going to try my brush actually with the blunt, blunter end and see if I can get a little more. The tail is going to be a little more difficult. Oh, I think that'll work. So like I said earlier, it is just the same size brush. actually working better. It's um, just been kind of beat up. Okay, so that is the basics of Dot Mandala Spiral, our red, white, and blue here. And you can add your own little flourish, you can add more in, but that's at least the basic idea of how you do it. Start from the center, keep your symmetry, and work your way out. So I hope you found this helpful. Happy Fourth of July coming up to all of you in the U.S. And I hope to see you all back soon. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave those below. If you're looking for my other videos, you can subscribe to my channel and they are all there. And if you have any ideas for future videos that you want or any questions, I look forward to interacting with you all in the comments. So. Have a great evening, and I'll see you again soon.